primos y primas, que lo que, welcome, bienvenidos to the Dear God, we there you the podcast, con tu prima favorita, soy Alicia Sanchez, and yes, this podcast is bilingual, empowering social good, one conversation at a time, sharing weekly insights and inspirations from people adding their magic to make this world a better place. Whether you want to learn more about volunteer travel, being more socially conscious, or you love a good conversation that breaks down barriers while evoking pasión and emoción. <laughs> this is the podcast for you. Grab a cafecito y vamos a hablar. <laughs> que lo que another episode. So last week we took a little break. Y tú sabes que alguna vez se necesita un break. You know, I said it to you guys from the beginning of the year, beginning of this uh, season, that I was going to try my best to be as consistent. And we've been doing it. Um, you know, it does take a lot of time to do all these things. And I'm so happy and honored to do it because I know that you guys are listening and tuning in. And even when I get one message that says, Oye, prima, pero donde está el podcast? It makes me feel good because I'm just like, oh, you're, you're, you're really listening to it? You're really waiting for it? Um, but I got something really good to talk about this week. And it's something that it's a question or it would be something that, how can I say, a comment um, that I get or I know people are thinking about. And it has to do with living your life and still caring about the world. You know, I've seen commentary online about people, you know, maybe, you know, in their BMWs or their Mercedes Benz or their Louis Vuitton bag and you know there's people throwing shade at them to diciéndole ah you know how you care about the world you know you you can feed 10 people with that bag or you can do this blah 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 and I have different perspectives <clears throat> I have different perspectives because you know me like if you don't know me <laughs> um, I don't like controversy but I'm trying to get a little bit better in being you know firm in what I believe in and sharing that and being okay with what I feel um And some people feel, you know, like, I don't want to feel like a hypocrite. You know, I live in this fancy house, you know, but, but I volunteer and I give to, you know, America Red Cross or these nonprofits and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, people are calling me a hypocrite and all this stuff. And I've seen it. I've seen it. I've read it. And there's a lot of us that feel that way. As, as a matter of fact, I remember when I le lived in Dominican Republic and I came back from living in, from in DR and a part of me felt some type of way. I'm like, Why am I getting all hot-headed by the cafecito at Starbucks when clearly when I'm in DR, I got to make my own coffee? Like, you know, like, why am I being, why am I acting like this? Like, this is something for me, you know? Or um, I would be at the store and I'm like, well, you, I know I don't need that, but I'm going to buy it anyways, you know? And it's having that perspective of like, dang, do, am I being a hypocrite? Um, are we all hypocrites? Do we feel like that? And I know if I feel like that, I know a lot of people feel like that. I know a lot of people that, you know, they live their lives. They, they work really hard, um, for the things that they love. It could be their dreamy vacations. It could be their home. It could be the things they buy that make them happy. And let me tell you something. This episode is for all of us and it's all of us. We've all felt this way. And this is something that when somebody says something to you, I'm going to give you an example of how to take that conversation and to make it in a positive way and still feel like not feel defensive because the first thing that we will feel is defensive. We'll feel like you don't know me. You don't know how hard I, you know, or, or whatever, whatever it is. Like it could be a defense thing because it does make you feel uncomfortable. It makes you feel like, are you, but it makes you think like, am I not allowed to work hard for these things that I love? Am I not allowed to spoil my children with the toys and all these things and the opportunities. And I'm going to say one, I'm going to say two words, two words is going to equal out how we're feeling about the situation. It's called social consciousness. You know, I am not against people living their life and buying the things that they like, but being social conscious means a lot of different things. And I'll give you an example of what that means. So just the other day, We were cleaning out the free refrigerator, the freezer. And I'm like, I was, sell I, I told my wife, I was like, we, we are, we look at all that food we've wasted because like, we didn't realize what we had in there. Because sometimes, you know, you clean the refrigerator, you clean the freezer, but then you, you, you season a chicken, you put it back there, you forget. And I'm like, oh, 
look at the waste that we're doing. And she says right away, she's like, you know what? I know it sounds crazy. I know it sounds like weird, but I think we need to get a different refrigerator. And the first thing, and I, and, 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 you know, there's two ways that people might look at that, right? She's like, no, I think we need to do that because I think one, we'll see what we have a little bit better. It'll be organized a little bit better. We see what we have. We see, we can organize the foods for the girls, you know, our healthy foods, and we can make sure that we, where it's not waste. In my perspective, I'm thinking of social consciousness, right? So I'm thinking, okay, one, we're wasting this freezer food that we season this meat or we season this stuff and we forget about it or we can't see it or we don't remember or maybe we're buying too much, right? And then we're buying too much and we're not eating all of it on time because you know kids, they have like their own special menu every day that they want. And my other side is like social consciousness, being aware of what we're doing and how can we fix it? And that is, that is a prime example about living your life and not feeling like you're a hypocrite, not feeling bad for what you're doing because you're being social conscious of what you're buying and how you're buying it. So the refrigerator example is just a, is a proof of like, okay, we might spend money on a refrigerator. Uh, I'm not going to call it luxurious, but a, a, a refrigerator that has more compartments so that we can organize our food differently or see our food differently or maximize our food a little bit differently so we don't waste food. The social consciousness in that is that we don't want to waste food. Yeah, we have to might buy something, but it's going to help us in the long run. Social and 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 and, and, and of course a refrigerator is a need. We need a refrigerator. Yeah, there's a lot of people who don't have refrigerators, but because of that, we cannot hold on to that. We can say what can we do? Ask yourself that question. What can I do? Although I'm living my life, what can I do? What can I change in my life? What can I add in my life to help social impact, to help to become more socially conscious of how I live my life? So the refrigerator is just an example of how we're going to solve that problem to stop wasting food because with children, it's really hard. I mean, it's really hard to buy certain things and not and we're doing our best we can. I mean, we, there's some weeks that we go and we, we ha- the, the, the refrigerator, that vacío, it's empty. We're like, oh my God, we're doing good. And sometimes it's hard. So we're trying to be more social consciousness with the littlest things like that. Another example is, um, you know, I have a lot of, I've, I've seen a lot of commentary of women buying like these sustainability, like um, the, you know, the paper, um, not the paper towels, but the, the hand towels they're, you know, or the plastic, they're not plastic, but they're like glass to keep their compartments. And they're, they're saying all these things like, oh, that's cost so much money, but they're not thinking about the social consciousness behind that for every paper towel that you're buying for every papel de, de sanitario for, for your toilet paper, for everything that you're buying paper wise, it is harming our environment in the sense of the lack of and the mind feed and all that stuff. So social consciousness is not saying that, oh, you're going to buy these hand towels that cost maybe 50 bucks, but they're reusable. The social consciousness says, yes, use that, but you're making a choice that you're helping the world. You're helping it into your perspective. Now I'm going to get to the good stuff. I'm just giving you all these different examples because, you know, you might come to me, but oh, prima. You know, I feel bad. I feel like a hypocrite. I have a, you know, I'm driving a Rolls Royce or whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm helping the world. Okay. You have to live the life that you love and you want to live. Nobody can tell you to not live your life. But what, dear God, are we there yet? What my vision for volunteers and what my vision, what my, my hope, you listening to this podcast is what can you do to add and change and to be conscious of that? Whatever choices that you make. If it's a really nice handbag that you, if your thing is like, look, I want a long lasting handbag. Think of there's other, there's brands, there's independent brands that you can buy that luxurious handbag that is ethically made with the certain types of fabrics. I mean, coming from the fashion industry, I can tell you, the waste of clothing in the world. And this is why, like, 
When I used to source my fabric but for my designs, I used to be re- like literally jump on the plane, go to Peru. I want to see who's sewing my clothes. I want to see who the family. I, I want to know where this stuff is coming from, where it's sourced. I don't want little kids sewing my stuff. I don't want, you know, people being treated horribly. I don't want, I was super involved. I would literally get on airplanes to go do this stuff because it was important to me. It was important to know that I didn't have little kids in little sweat let sweatshops sewing my stuff, that there were women beaten and having no rights. Even in Los Angeles, California, I would go there because there's sweatshops right in there in the States. Social consciousness is asking yourself, what can I do to add to the world? What can I do on an ongoing basis? It's not about you give a donation today and tomorrow and that's it. So never let God, God, yo, you say it. No, social consciousness is being conscious of how you're living your life that will impact other people. Nobody's not saying you can't go to your lavish vacation. Nobody is saying any of that. All we're saying is when you're going to the lavish vacations, think about how you're going to be treating those people when you're going there. Instead of haggling because you know me, if you don't know me, I, I love discounts and stuff, but I have a different perspective when you go to these places, like treat them tip them don't haggle them down to like a dollar because they make these things these little tchotchkes that you're going to go give to your co-work that you never talk to my point is social consciousness is how we're going to live our life in a more meaningful way that will still impact other people you want to live in the big house get your big house boo boo get it get the beautiful house get whatever it is that you work hard for because it, you have a meaning a deep meaning but think about the people in your in the house. Maybe you're going to hire um, local businesses. Maybe someone who's going to come, who, who's going to come do your um, your sprinklers, or who's going to do your roof. Think about those people. Is it a mom and pop shop? Is it a small business? Can you give back to your community? Can you go back to your community and say, you know what? I bought my big house, but I'm going to donate all these flowers for a community garden. Social consciousness is not just saying, oh, I cannot be in my nice car, in my nice shoes and feel bad about the world. No, it's saying that you, you, you appreciate the world. You have gratitude for the world. It's not being an extremist in the sense of like, okay, I'm not going to do that. And I'm gonna do that. If that's what you want to do, do you, boo. You do that. But so many of us feel so guilty. Just me the other day, I was in the store and I was picking up some stuff I was at the grocery store and um, I happened to, to, to pass by Bell's or whatever, the, the store. And, you know, I see people buying all this stuff and like, you know, all this holiday stuff. And I don't have a, I mean, that's them. Me, I just, the holidays change so quickly by the time if I decorate for one holiday. I mean, the only holiday, like, holiday I ever really decorate anything is Christmas because I feel like, Con crema, yo tengo a good solid month and maybe I stretch it for two months because you know if you're Dominican or Spanish in January, you will have that Christmas tree up. So that's like two months holiday, right? Because two for one, you know, um, we got the three kings day. So that's it. You know, you know, ya tu sabe, right? So, but I see these people doing that. And the first thing in my mind is like, we're human and we judge people, but why am I judging I don't know if she's buying that for this person. I don't know if she's it, what she's doing with that. And I go into because I'm buying some candles because I'm encanta la casa que buena. I love candles. So I, I go and buy some candles and um, which um, you know I I could buy and I have bought from local businesses like independent brands. But I needed a quick candle and I, I usually do buy them in there quickly um, or even Walmart has them. And I noticed that the lady was saying that she was buying all these decorations to lift up the spirit in her neighborhood about the holidays because everybody's feeling a little because like they were older community. So they're feeling a little down and they're feeling like, a, you know, like, oh, the holidays, you know, Corona, we've been all inside the house. And so she literally bought one little thing and she's and she's going naming off like this is for this person. This is for that person. I know they love this. So I got them that. She's going to leave it in the front door and it's too, and with a little no. And for me, I just said, I, and the first thing I said, I was like, you're doing, you're being an impact to the world. And she's like, no, like, cause she thinks that I'm, 
she thinks that this impact to the world means this grand always thing and that she's Angelina Jolie and she has to go to this country and that no I'm like girl you are being an impact in your world she's just blushed automatically and I can kind of see it because her mask is on but I can kind of see that her you know her her eyes started getting watery and she's like that is the sweetest thing I've heard I'm like well people need to tell you more often and even if people don't see you doing it just know that you're being an impact to the world because what you're doing it's not about buying something it's about the thought behind it it's about the social consciousness effort it's about the impact behind it to say I'm going to make this person feel this way maybe this token will remind them that they are human that everything is going to be okay and that the world is going to work out and it made me feel good at the sense to know that like we can't be judging people we can't start thinking oh look at them I want you know five people can eat from blah 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 blah. we don't know what people do in their lives so for number one Social consciousness is asking yourself the question of what can I do in my life every single day? What can I bring? What can I add? What can I change? What can I explore in my life with the things that I have? Because there's a saying and everybody knows it. When you have more, you can give more. But guess what? Even if you don't have nothing, you can still give anything. And that's the beauty of it. You can give anything and time is the most precious thing. Number two is don't judge people on what they do and what they don't do. Because, because it's a persona, they drive a nice car and they have this and blah, blah, blah. You don't know what they're doing. Um, the girl that was doing my hair, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had, we were good, you know, cause you know, when you get your hair, you got to get your head done. You're there for many hours. So you're having a conversation And I love the fact that this young girl is just so humble. And, you know, you think, you know, this girl, she has fun. She goes out, she, you know, does these things. But her priority is her family and how she's helping her family in Haiti. And she's, you know, helping her and helping them, not in the sense to just, okay, here's the help. No, she's building a life. She's, she's getting their land prepared, getting their home prepared. Like she is really thinking that, yes, I have this here and I'm enjoying my life and I can't feel bad for enjoying my life, but I know that there's things that I can do to help, to help people back in, in Haiti and to, and to help educate them and giving them options. And it's important to know to stop feeling bad. Stop feeling bad about what you do, what you don't do, and what other people do, what don't you don't do. Just think of how you can continue to do that. The refrigerator is just a prime example The smallest changes in your life can make a huge difference for someone and you don't even have to know it. You, you, I mean, you don't even know it. You won't even know it. And the third one I want to say is these uncomfortable conversations that people have when people say to you, like, you know, if you're, if you're doing these fancy things or you're living or you want to go to Bali or you want to go to these places, listen, go to those places. Nobody's telling you not. In fact, I would love you to go to those places so you learn more about the world. This is why we are a volunteer travel community because the traveling is a sense of experience and learning about the world, learning about cultures. And when you're outside of yourself and outside of your norm, you start learning about more about the world and what the world needs and how you can adapt to that and helping the world. So go, go see how these, these cultures are, go see how these worlds work, because when you come back, you're going to take something from it. You're going to take something that you've never experienced. And you're going to tell yourself like, wow, I'll never look at this different, uh, uh, the same again. And I'm happy. I'm not because now you could do something about it. So I didn't want to make this podcast super long today, but I wanted to make this a really, really important, um, I wanted to make this a statement because we constantly think that we are being hypocrites for the way that we live and that we're, you know, that we're being selfish or or shamelessless or whatever it is. And you could still be in gratitude. You could still live the life you want and you deserve. And then you dream because guess what? You have dreams, you have inspirations, you have aspirations and you have that. And nobody's telling you not to go for them. Go for them. You want the nice car, you want the nice house, you want the vacations, you want to give the best to your children, do it. 
All I'm asking is think about the social consciousness on an ongoing period, not just the I give one time and that's it. How can you continue to give in a way? And we're not talking about monetizing because you don't have to be rich or famous to help people. Just in way of how you do something, your neighbor might see it, your, your sister might see, your brother might see, your family might see, and everybody might start adapting to it. And that right there is a change. So, um, that, that, that's basically it. I mean, I, I remember when I was in the fashion industry and really heavy in the fashion industry, the last story I want to tell you is that I used to, I always loved going to charity shop, love thrift shops. It's just something that I love, something about the rich fabrics and the different silhouettes from other, um, you know, eras of fashion that I was always so inspired. So I always used to go in there for inspiration just because a lot of fabrics were not made and, um, just different everything. Somebody used to say to me, you know, like a lot of people in the industry, industry used to say to me, but you know, why are you spending money on somebody who wore that stuff? I'm like, your point? Your your point? Your, what is your point if somebody else wore it when you wash the clothes? Does, does, that, does that really matter? Do we know where, we, where clothes is coming from? Do you know who made that? outfit that you're wearing and how much it really costs and how much they pay for that person. Like, and maybe it matters to you. Maybe it doesn't matter to you. Maybe you can have one luxury item and then maybe you can have 5,000 luxury items. Just think about the effect of it. That's all. That's nobody's saying that to live your life. And so I had to always constantly say that and just add these little nuggets and say, Hey, where do you get your stuff? No, I don't get my stuff made in this, 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 the country, because I know how the, how people are treated. So I'd rather go to this, this, this country, and I'd rather work with these people, and I'd rather go in person, and I'd rather deal with these people where I can sit down, have a cafecito, we talk, we laugh. I mean, I remember going to Peru all the time, sitting, having a little coffee, you know, treats, kiki, kiki, because you know Dominicans, so we have a lot of jokes so that they, they understand, but they're like, oh my God, you guys are crazy, because you know, Dominicans are crazy. So, and it's just like you start, you understand who the grandmother is, the, um, who the owner is and why the owner got involved all the people, all the women that work there. And it's just like beautiful. It's beautiful. You're, you're, you're feeding them. You're giving them the business. But at the same time, you know that your stuff is being made ethically and sustainability and sustainability is important. Knowing that we can recycle fabrics, that we can reuse fabrics and all the scraps will not go to waste and, and endless. So my whole point of the podcast is stop feeling like you're a hypocrite because you're not a hypocrite. Just start thinking about ways that you can be more social conscious about the decisions you make and the things that you want in your life. But don't stop giving your children those vacations that you want. No, explain to them. We're going to these places because I want you to explore the world. I want you to see this. I I always say, you know, even to my team, like, I want moms and parents to know about social consciousness and social impact for their children because I want them to not, because I don't want to raise, not them, I don't want to raise a spoiled brat. And I say it all the time. Like if, if, if she's going to be a spoiled brat, let her be a spoiled brat for something else, but not with not knowing how the world works and how, what, what we need to take gratitude and the things, where do things come from and the hard work things take and what the value of money is and the value of an experience and the value of an education. Those are the things that we can instill as parents. So think about it, take them to wherever you want to take them, but make sure to tell them the basis of it and the importance and how the world and how other children, how can we help other children go to school and how can we help support other children? How can we help um, understand how the world works a little bit better. I hope you enjoyed the today's podcast. It was a little longer than expected, but I'm really passionate about this because, you know, I know a lot of us feel like this and especially with the holidays coming up, you know, think about what you need and what you really want. Think about what it is that is important to you. And yeah, it's okay to treat yourself. And the same way that you're treating yourself, treat someone else. And it doesn't always have to be money. It can be time. So if you're not a volunteer, check out our platform. You can become a volunteer, a virtual volunteer. And when the gates of travel open, you can definitely go to our our volunteer travel opportunities that we'll be having. Our first trip is actually official. I know it for sure because it is my homeland. We are going to Dominican Republic. So I would love for you guys to join and come. And when I say to come to Dominican Republic, it's 
to really be in this, if the impact is with real people and real communities and impacting the change of these people's lives, not just for one day or two weeks, but forever. So hasta la próxima. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we will see you next week para otra parte. Weba. Thank you for tuning in. Show us your love and join the conversation on one of our ruedas sociales, social media. Leave a podcast review and be sure to tune in next week. Y que ahora, what's next? Check out our website and volunteer today. We have so many virtual volunteer opportunities. And remember, you can be a part of the change in a changing world. Hasta la próxima. Besos.